Hi, I'm Isaac Newton. My name is Albert Einstein. Thank you for meeting with me. I just got done reading your book, The Principia. I have to say that I did disagree with some of your ideas, especially concerning space and time. I was hoping I could enlighten you by telling you a little more about my general theory of relativity, which touches on the essence of gravity and how the relativity of space and time affect gravity. But space and time are two separate entities. Space and time are relative because when perspective changes, some of what was space can become time and some of what was time can become space. This space-time distortion causes a curved surface, which is what causes the pull between objects. Gravity is a force. It's not based on geometry. Gravity acts as a force on two objects, pulling them towards each other, uh, such as the Earth pulling the moon towards itself. Whatever causes gravity, the action at a distance, travels with infinite velocity, and it works at a distance. Here, let me demonstrate what I mean. I think I have something that can help. Perfect. Uh, imagine I'm the sun, and the ball going around is the Earth. Now watch me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Remember, I'm the sun, okay? This is the mm -hmm. Earth. The orbit keeps going because there's a pull between me and the Earth. And I can't get this off between me and the Earth. So, this is what I mean when I say there's a pull. Because it never loses its orbit. So, it is a force. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea would be true if the universe weren't flat. Though I applaud your clever demonstration, geometry is what causes the gravitational pull of objects. Take this apple, for instance. If two parallel lines were traveling together on a curved surface such as this, they would travel in as straight a line as possible but would eventually meet. It is not an outside force that causes this, but the curvature of the curved surface. This curvature is not an action at a distance, but it occurs locally at whatever object it is pulling. I don't understand because I thought all space was flat. Think of light just like those parallel lines. The particles move in a space-time curve, so on a curved surface, gravity will cause light to bend. But how can that be when light is not even affected by gravity? Only mass causes gravity, and light photons have zero mass, so, so gravity and light have no relation. Gravity isn't only affected by mass. Mass and energy are equivalent, which explains that all forms of energy have an effect on and are affected by gravity. You're crazy! First you said that space and time are relative, and now you're saying that mass and energy are equivalent? I'm telling you, space and time, as well as mass and, mass and energy, are all relative and they have an effect on one another and on gravity itself. But my universal law of gravity supports that they're clearly separate entities. Absolute space and time are fixed, and they remain the same. Everyone knows that. Maybe everyone in the 17th century. Today we know so much more than what you initially discovered. Your ideas were not completely incorrect, but did not have enough evidence or details to be considered universal theories. So you're saying that my theories hold true here on Earth, Locally, but not necessarily at a universal level? Yes! In fact, you are correct that there is a pull between objects here on Earth, and that it causes objects such as apples to fall to the Earth. But you have to think of gravity in the universe a little differently. As I was saying, space and time are united in what I call space-time. Space-time forms a kind of fabric in space that you could think of as the surface of a trampoline. The sun pulls down on this fabric, and the curve in the fabric is what causes the planets to be attracted to the sun and stay in orbit. Actually, I think I, ha I may have a little something that can prove my point. Ah, yes, perfect. Ah. Can I have two people come and hold this for me? Yes. Come right up. I'm going to demonstrate. I don't know what you're going to do. Uh -huh. Great, these are perfect. Huh? This is space-time fabric, okay? When in the presence of mass, space-time creates, a curvature is created. So if this is the universe, you're saying it'd be like the sun and the planets orbiting. Yep. Well, that wouldn't happen in space. Yeah. But that's <laughs> all, it's all relative, you know? Okay. Does that make any sense to you? I think so. So... Let me get this straight. So this is space-time fabric. It is. This is the sun. Yes. Those are the planets. Yes. So if we were in space, and this friction between space-time, 
fabric and the ball. It wouldn't necess it wouldn't be there ca causing them to continuously orbit. Oh, okay, so they would keep going. They would keep going. So gravity is really just curvature pulling to the middle. Exactly. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Right? You've got it. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, this fabric is what you mean when you say gravity is geometry. It's the geometry of the space-time fabric that causes gravity. I've been trying to discover some unknown force that causes objects to come together, but I see that you're right now. Now you understand how it is more than just mass that affects gravity. Wow, we make a good team, and no wonder they call us the fathers of gravity.